Today we're going to tow Jerry's 150 gallon reef tank. How's it going today, Jerry? It's going great. How's Ex everybody today? Excellent, excellent, thank you. So you have a very beautiful 150 gallon reef tank. How long has this guy been up and running? It has been up for about probably a little over two years. Um, it really didn't get corals until about a year and a half ago or something like that. Um, it's going pretty strong okay. though. Did you start mostly from frags or some of the bigger colonies? Cause yeah. like there's some pr pretty big growth you got going on here. Everything in there was a frag, everything. Even the, the chalice, um, you know, pre pretty much everything. I, I don't think there's anything in there that, that started any bigger than a, a couple inches. Oh, very cool. Including even the acans have even actually grown that big from uh, single heads. Oh, really? Yeah. Nice. So about a year and a half, two years-ish? Yeah. About that. Yeah. Mm. Nice. Still, uh, still kind of adding some things here and yeah. there. But now, was this tank an upgrade or did you start this one fresh as its own tank? So, um, I had two 120s here in this place and uh, they both outgrew themselves. I ended up uh, deciding to do a, a bit of an upgrade. So it, it was pretty much upgrade. I, you know, I bought the tank separate and um, got somebody to make it, get it for me, and then uh, just kind of slowly put the stuff together. I really didn't kind of rush this one. Mm -hmm. I sold all my livestock and the other systems first, so I didn't really have a lot pushing me to have to hurry. Um, kind of nice we could take your time in it. Yeah, you know, and, and you know that nervous feeling when you're setting up a new tank. You want to rush, but you don't want to. You want yep. it to kind of draw out a little bit, take a little time, you know, and um, although it looks pretty cluttered, I, I do try to uh, really decide where things are going to go and, and where it's going to fit where, and it, it's really more thought out, you know, than um, I probably anticipated, but it, it's just kind of how it happens. And, so you're obviously a little more on the stick side of things. You got tons of acros in here. Yes. Love my SPS. Uh, I love all corals, love all salt fish. Actually, I love everything in the whole, you know, fresh and salt to be honest, but um, I don't know what it is. It's the acros that does it for me. It's, it's the, the polyps waving in the, in the water. And, you know, a yep. lot of people come over and uh, they, they say, well, you know, I like the wavy stuff, but I, I see those little polyps on them waving around and I don't know, it just does it for me. and. Um, I, I just like the comp, the challenge, I guess. I, I, you know, I'm, I'm 44, about to be 45. I had my first salt tank at like 11. You know, I've been doing Heaven's Tanks for so long that, um, you know, it's, I, I guess it's just kind of to that point where I just, you know, I want to be able to pull my hair out every once in a while because something's <laughs> driving me crazy, I guess. And acros would do it for you. <laughs> do you have any favorite corals in the tank? <sighs> well... I love chalice, believe it or not. Um, as much acro as I have, that chalice that you're close to, it's probably my favorite. Yeah, it's you beautiful. know, that's um, probably one of my most prideful uh, chalice. And then, nice. as far as acros, you know, I, I've got this uh, the one over here, Pieces of the Ocean, um, Tropic Thunder, I think it is. It's been chopped up a little bit lately in the last year or so, but it used to be uh, a little more full. It used to have blue tips. It's probably my favorite acro in the tank. Nice. That's pretty. Of, of all of them. I actually got that as a little one-inch frag at Magna in New Orleans that we did. When we put Magna on in yep. 2017. Nice. Um, I got that as a one-inch frag then, and that's what it it grew into. That one and this, um, I'm just going to call it a deep water acro that blue in that's a nice color. You know, um, I got that as a, I mean, it was maybe a half inch at Magna 2017. And um, that's probably my, those two are probably my favorite of the two. Nice. I, you know, but yeah, that's a slow grow right there, mm -hmm. that, that blue one. I've never fragged it ever. I've got one frag in the frag tank that I, I it's just a backup yeah. that I don't know if I'll ever sell. <laughs> just in case. Hey, it's always wise to have backups of your corals. Yeah, that's one thing yeah. I've come to learn, unfortunately, over the years yeah. is um, it's best if you can give a couple friends some backups and then even have opportunity to put something away for yourself. No, oh, exactly. So mm -hmm. lighting wise, you got T5s running on this. Yes. Yeah. Same one. You actually have a frag tank that's, that's also plumbed in, right? Yes. Yep. Yeah. They're plumbed in together. Yeah. So the frag tanks run an eight bulb, the uh, three footers, I think 36 watts are what they are, I believe. And um, I love T5s. I'm a huge T5 fan. I, 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 I don't have anything against LEDs, but, um, 
just I love the growth. I just love the way they, 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 uh, the corals respond to them. Um, I just love the colors. I, and uh, I've always had T5s. Well, let me rephrase. After I went from my 400 watt metal halides and VHO attenic bulbs, I went to the T5s, and I've just never stepped back. Mm -hmm. I've never um, veered away from them. And the main tank has a 10 bulb, five footers on it, and uh, I got it, I guess, about a foot and a half off the yeah. tank or something like that. How often do you change the bulbs in them? I actually run them about a year and a half. Year and a half? I know some people like to go less than a year, and some people say a year. Um, generally, at about a year and a half, I start replacing them, and I usually do like two bulbs at a time. Mm -hmm. I have done all the bulbs at one time and haven't noticed any um, harmful effects or anything like that, but I um, mean, you know, that price is $50 every two bulbs, you know, so um, I change them out about every year and a half. So I guess that's the disadvantage when it comes to LEDs that people speak of, but um, for, for me, it's not, it's, not, it's not that much of a burden, you know, I, I don't mind. So do you have a special bulb combination that you like, or do you mix it up? I, um, I'm a big fan of Blue Plus. Yep. And let me see how many I've got on this one right here. On the 10 ball, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven Blue Plus, one Atenic, and I think uh, two Fiji Purples. Nice. I consider the Fiji Purples white bulbs, in my opinion. That's, yep. that's my white lighting. Mm -hmm. um, the Atenic bulb, I don't know that it does anything. To be honest, I don't even know that you even really see the effect <laughs> on it. I've thought about changing it to another Blue Plus, but in my opinion, if you want to grow SPS and you're going to go T5s, the uh, ATI Blue Plus, you cannot go wrong. Uh, they'll grow, yeah. they'll grow acros with by themselves with no other bulb. Good to know. know. I did a hybrid fixture with four bulbs in it, and I did all Blue Plus. So all Blue Plus. I made the there right choice. <laughs> yep. So you made your stand yourself, and one cool thing that I found with this is you have doors, but the panel also pops up. Yeah, you got so options. I did put doors on it. So one of the things that I really disliked about my old stand and about my old system, there was two things that drove me absolutely crazy. One thing is I had a center brace. Hated mm -hmm. it. Yep. Couldn't wait to get rid of that. Second thing is I had a bar in the middle. Or it was always hard to get in. When I built this stand, I welded it by my father's house. We, nice. I decided to go with some rare earth magnets in the door panel, but also have doors mm -hmm. because I want to be able to get in there. With this design, you know, I put some cross braces. I braced a little extra underneath in spots that you can't always see with angle iron, but I mean, you can see. I've got all the room in the world to work on. Anything can come out. It's just so much easier. And um, this was the main, this was one of the main things that made me kind of upgrade. Mm -hmm. um, it was just because I wanted simplicity. Yep. You know, my, my tank is pretty su simple. I don't have a lot of fancy stuff on it. You know, some stuff you consider like the chromo pump and stuff maybe is a little more fancy than like a top off with calc. Mm -hmm. But the tank's pretty simple and um, everything's really easy to kind of get to and um, it just makes it more enjoyable to, yep. to, to have the tank when you're not fighting everything all the time. Exactly. Well, um, th there's something nice about simplicity, less stuff to break and go wrong well, that's and maintain. True too, and, you know. yeah. So you're running the calcium reactor. Mm -hmm. And have you done, had the calcium reactor from day one or did you add this in later? Or? Actually, um, my old system, I ran uh, calc, and then when I set this one up, I had a calc stir, and it just couldn't keep up with the demand, so I eventually got a, cal a calcium reactor, and um, best decision I've ever made, I think. I did have a you know, problem or two here, they have mostly user error, mm -hmm. but, um, but once it's locked in and set, man, I mean, it, it's solid. Between that and the Comor pump, I, I get hardly no fluctuation in alkalinity through the day and um and i really kind of set it and forget it the uh, only thing i if i was going to do different that i would do different here is um i think i want to get another chamber mm -hmm. so i don't have to uh replace media as often um i run it kind of low ph at six five kicks back on at six seven so i kind of burn through media pretty fast mm -hmm. but um but you can see where it's going. Well, I mean, you know, the, the uptake is, is, is... It's worth it for the results to speak for themselves. Right. What's, um, does this blue light have any purpose or just for you to see inside? It has no purpose at all, okay. just for me to see inside. And I did, mm -hmm. I, I did have a refugium in here on mm -hmm. this side, but when I did the refugium, I had the um, blue and red coral growing yep. lights and stuff that ran it. But um, this system, I have a problem keeping nitrates. It, it, they run at zero all the time. 
And um, when I had the refugium on there, for one, that was just adding to that problem. Mm -hmm. For two, it was just more to maintain. Yep. Um, so I eventually decided uh, to just do away with it. There are some rocks down in the sump. I don't know that they're there so much for, um, uh, you know, nitrate and phosphate mm -hmm. removal type thing for bacteria. They were just stuff that I was setting in the tank and I, I, you know, I couldn't find a spot I want. I like the rocks. I put them in there so they kind of stay cycled. And over time, they just kind of wind up there and, and that's kind of where they are. They may, um, I'm assuming they help somewhat with the, you know, with the cycling, you know, and everything of them. Um, Other yeah, bacteria everything. source in a way. Right, you know, so I don't find that bad, but, but if somebody's watching this and wondering if they need to put rocks, you know, in, in their sump, I, I don't know that it's that much of a um, benefit. It, it probably makes it just harder for me to clean the sump, but, <laughs> But the tank's doing well, you know, with them in there, so they just kind of been, they did just there. That works. Now, you have chunks of your tank with sand and chunks without. Did you remove some, or is it just from the pumps over time? So, I did um, remove. I had sand in it originally, and um, really just a flow thing. Got tired of it kind of pushing around a little bit. So, I removed a little bit from different spots. I was doing it little by little. I still kind of want to remove some more sand off this side so my eight cans will sit flat on the glass. They just don't care. They don't grow as fast on the sand. Those eight cans used to be in the middle of the tank and they grew a lot faster there. Um, I've since turned up the flow. It was kind of rough on them, moved them to the side, put some encrusted monies on the bottom because they can handle it. And, um, and, and so eventually I'm probably going to pull some more sand out on that side. But at that point, I'll probably stop. I do have a big uh, mystery wrasse in here. He's probably six inches, five and a half. It's one of the biggest ones I've seen. He keeps hiding in the hole back there. But So I like to keep a little sand. I've got some other critters and stuff. but. Um, but yeah, so I kind of siphoned, siphoned some out and kind of left the rest. The pump kind of pushed it to the back. And, uh, and, and I, th I think I'll probably just kind of leave it like that for the most part. Nice. So what are you running for flow in the tank? So I have the, um, those are the, uh, the uh, Coral Views. The Octo something? Octo Fours, yeah. that's right. So I've got two of the Octo Fours. I've got two of your cheap Jibo pumps um, just for a little extra flow. To be honest, the Jibos aren't needed. Those mm -hmm. Octo fours are turned all the way down. They're on yeah. like one or two. They're amazing. I mean, they, they, and I'm not trying to give David over at Coralview a plug, even though he's one of our Aquafest sponsors. Yeah. I mean, you can see it's literally set at one dot. And I mean, if I turn these things up, the, you know, I'll, I'll just go to four on this side and then I'll do the same over here and you'll see they're unbelievable. You know, and that, that's about midway. Yep. And they'll start to really chop the top of the surface and all, and the corals really, really, um, you know, take a good, good liking to it. But, uh, yeah, I, but I don't leave them up all the time. You can kind of see the sand and all starting to blow around and all. But, uh, but they, 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 they've worked really well for me. Oh, excellent. You know, see those polyps in the back just giving her in the flow now? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the dreaded, uh, the dreaded green star polyps. Everybody hates and so afraid of, but uh. They're a great splash of color. I just, I love my, let them grow yeah. so much and then I'll, I'll scrape big sheets off of it, bring it to the pet store, mm. let them have it. I don't even charge them for it. And um, and then I, re, you know, re, re, re let it grow again. And It's a very bright, vibrant green. Mm -hmm. I still have my token piece in the tank too. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It's. It's like everything in, in, in the tank, you know, if you kind of keep, if you don't mind taking the time to, to prune it and remove it over time, it doesn't come such a nuisance. It's not as mm -hmm. bad as some of the nuisance corals. And so, so for people that don't know much about Aquafest, since you're one of the ones helping put it on, tell us a little bit more about it. Okay, so what Aquafest is, um, we, st we put our first show on in 2014 here in Slidell, uh, which is in the greater New Orleans area, and that show was called Fragnap. Um, our local... Uh, slang around here is land yap. That's free extra stuff. Um, you know, uh, just good extras. So we named it Frag Yap, Frags, Land Yap. You know, get it. Mm -hmm. um, but now we, we've moved on to we're going to have fresh water and stuff this show, mm -hmm. and we're also um, just catering to more you know outside of Louisiana. So you know we've changed the name to Aquafest. Same location, same show, most of the same vendors, but we're bringing on more vendors. We're also going to have a freshwater side of it. It's me and two other guys that actually own and started Aquafest. And um, it's April 18th, 19th. Really looking forward to it. It's going to be a great show. 
really great lineup at vendors, and um, it's just going to be exciting. Um, and it's something we take really dear to heart. It's really dear passion-wise. You know, you can see the person putting on, the people putting on, all three of us putting on Aquafest. It's three of us. And um, all three of us have systems like this. Yep. All three of us are dedicated. All three of us just love the hobby. It's born from the hobby and it, support it, the hobby, which it's is It's awesome. exactly what it is. And, and, and honestly, to be honest, the whole show thing started because we just wanted to bring it to Louisiana. Just mm -hmm. wanted to bring something for the hobby. And every year, people will talk to us about how much they appreciate it, how great a time they had. And that's what's been in the influence to keep trying to grow and to make it bigger. And, you know, over the years, we felt like we were kind of leaving out the freshwater mm -hmm. people. So that's why we changed from Fragnap to, it's not just corals now, to Aquafest, because we want to include the freshwater and salt water. We want to yeah. include everybody. And, um, and, and to be honest, most coral hobbyists these days started as fresh hobbyists. A lot yeah. of them started with cichlids or so most mm -hmm. of the time. And um, so, you know, hopefully we can, we can bring both sides together and, um, and you know, my goal is that everybody that comes to our show one day has both a salt and fresh tank in their house. Yeah. Nice. You know, um, unfortunately, I don't have a fresh water system <laughs> right now because I kind of promised the wife we'd have one tank for a while, and yeah. we got two. I see two. I, I, and I now see three. She, yeah, and now my wife has her own little nano <laughs> tank with some zooanthids and stuff. Yep. And um, she's, she's, you know, it, it's, got a, it's got a good number of zooanthids yep. in there. I don't know, but it's, they're still frags. They're still growing, but... About a year, that tank ought to look really nice. And you know, it would be awesome once it's fully it, covered in zoas. And so, guys, any of y'all that, you know, you, you, I see a lot of posts online where the guys can't get, you know, their wives don't want this. And buy your wife a fish tank. Yep. Make it, do yourself a favor. Get her own tank. Buy her own corals. And, um, and then maybe she won't give you such a hard time. I'm fortunate. <laughs> My wife and kids actually work with the shows. They actually participate in Aquafest. They work behind the scenes. Um, they're involved, so I've never had the problem. Uh, matter of fact, my wife picked out a coral last year. She really wanted it. It was $2,500. So needless to say, we didn't get it. <laughs> but for the guys that always say their wife won't let them spend anything, um, yep. if I listened to my wife, we'd spend way too much. <laughs> so <laughs> nice. I have the opposite, the opposite problem, you know. It's a so good problem to have. It's a good problem. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. I'm looking forward to the show. and. Yeah, it's, I love seeing that it's put on by hobbyists, right? So it's That's all right. passion for the true, hobby, for the true, corals. True hobbyists, true passion. Mm -hmm. um, we definitely do it for the love of the hobby. There's no doubt that that's the first uh, reason that we go through the, 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 the troubles, or I wouldn't call it troubles, but the work, you know, because mm -hmm. it, it, it is work, you know, to, to put on a show, of, you know, like this, it, 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 we do have to um, put the time in. So you have to love it. Yep. If it's... If, if, if it's if it's not something you're getting, making a ton of money off of, you, you have to love it. And we, we do truly love it. And, heck, this, is, this has been my passion since I was a little kid. I, I, don't know what I, would, um, I don't know what I would do without it, to be honest with you. I know. It would be like a void in your life without having a tank. It would now. definitely be a void in my life. I, I, would, I spent a little time in the Marine Corps, and um, that was some of the roughest time not having a fish tank there. And uh, I thought about it often. Mm -hmm. I really did. And if that would have been a way when I was on base that I could have set something up and not got in trouble for it. I'd have had a tank there too. <laughs> nice. No, yeah. That's awesome. Well, you got your tank now and it's, it's a stunning tank. It's grown in nice. It's beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, I'm excited to come, you know, see you again in a couple of months and see yeah, you at the show. Yeah, a couple of months, see how it's doing. Maybe it'll grow a little bit in a couple of months and um, who knows, maybe we can have you down again next year and maybe it'll be a little more filled out and all. And um, it's a little filled out in spots now, you know. Oh, it looks pretty packed. It's some may great. say cluttered in some spots, but um, but the reef grows like that. The reef figures itself out, and mm -hmm. it'll figure itself out, and I'll help it along here and there. And yep. So any any tips you give someone trying to get this nice growing out pack tank? So like one, for, for a year, it's looking pretty packed, pretty good. So One tip that I have mm -hmm. is read, read, read. There's nothing wrong with books. There really yeah. isn't. I know everything's online now, but... Um, there's something to be said about a book that doesn't give you multiple opinions at once. I love the internet. Part of the problem I think sometimes people have, they get on the internet and there's so many opinions and so many ways to do it. But that's just it. There is so many ways to do it and so many people chase everybody else's numbers. The first question people ask when they see a nice take is what are your parameters? Yep. 
And sometimes I think what gets lost in there is, is that that's their parameters and it's mm -hmm. not your parameters. It's not your tank. You know, every system's different. And um, I think sometimes that gets lost in, in, in everything. And just be patient. Figure out what's good for your system. What does your system, what, what alkalinity does your tank like? What calcium does your tank like? You know, this, your tank might like a little nitrates. The next guys might not, you know. And don't beat yourself up over that, you know. A lot of people hurt their tank by chasing numbers all the time mm -hmm. and trying to get it to what this guy's is and to try to get it, you know. Look at all. Uh, I don't know if everybody is familiar, but Sanji, mm -hmm. been in, 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 you know, years. I mean, he's a huge name in this. He's got some of the highest nitrates and phosphates, you know, you'll hear. And this tank's absolutely stunning, you know. And it's, um, sometimes, you know, I just feel it's just better to just kind of go flow with your tank and see what your tank likes. You're going to have problems here and there, but just move through them with where your system wants to move through them. And um, most of the time where I see people having problems is just, like the chasing numbers, trying to get it to where it's supposed to be, but not really realizing where your tank wants to be. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, I, and I think that, you know, I, I think if you do that, sometimes you take a lot of stress off yourself, a lot of stress off the hobby, a lot of stress off the corals even sometimes, and um, it just makes for a more enjoyable and pleasant experience yeah. in my opinion, you know, but. Another big thing too is when you're chasing numbers, you're constantly changing things, and that's mm. one of the worst things for coral. That's just right. You know, they can adapt to low or high or whatever, but That's they right. just want consistency. That's right. And everything yeah. with temperature and all. I see, you know, people ask what temps should have my tank. And one person is 77 and the next person is 81. And there's no way you can have it at 81. Or there's no way, you know, it's, it's every tank is going to be different. You just kind of have to see where your tank sits and what it likes. Mm -hmm. You know, and um, the one thing I try to do is just admire people's fish tanks, pick their brain a bit. But I don't come home and automatically try to implement it in my system. Mm -hmm. I, I think about it. I may, I may go over it in my head multiple times for a, a couple months if it's something new that I want to try before I really decide that I'm going to give it a shot. Mm -hmm. And then even at that, then you have to be patient because everything takes so long to set up. If you're hurting the tank, sometimes that takes a few weeks to happen. If you're doing good for the tank, sometimes that takes a month to happen. So if you decide you're going to do something, really think about it first and then when you decide to make that decision and that's what you're going to do mm -hmm. stick with it don't yep. don't let it go for two weeks i see people say well i started adding amino acids two weeks ago and after two weeks you know i'm not seeing anything or this is happening you know or i decided to drop my out to this or raise my elk or i switched salts to this and now it's not doing what i thought it was going to do do you recommend what other salt to switch to and you know and <laughs> you know it, it's, it's just it's just too frequent it's just it's yeah. not um Stops changing constantly. Right. You Pick one thing and go with it. If it doesn't work, give it six yeah. months. And I know that sounds like a long time, but the one thing that most people that have been doing this a long time, everybody knows, is nothing good happens fast mm -hmm. in this industry. Nothing. The only good things that happen usually take a little time, and only things that happen quickly are usually bad. Yeah, true story. And, you know, and that's just the way it, that's just the way it is. So um, keep your hands out your tank, even though I'm a bad, I'm bad <laughs> for that because I'm this top is off all the time, and I'm always fooling with it but I'm not changing parameters I'm not changing things I'm just moving stuff around or mm -hmm. you know or just things of that nature most of the time but um but that that probably be my most solid advice yeah. and then my, my second thing of advice is um that I see is take a little pride in your system if it's 10 gallons be proud of your, your, your 10 gallon tank if it's 500 gallons, be proud of your 500 gallon tank. Um, I see a lot of people in this hobby put a lot of pressure on them because they always want to look like the next guys, the next big tank or the next fancy. If you don't have the means or you don't have the size in your house or you don't have, you can't afford a thing, whatever you do, you still have the same amount of pride in it because that's going to show back in your tank. Yep. That's where you're going to see your corals. When you have something that you're, you, you constantly don't like this about your tank or you you're always envious of the next and you don't put your own pride in your tank it'll actually show in your tank take care of your tank like it's the best tank in the world and your corals will repay you your yeah. fish will repay you and you'll have a beautiful system and you'll enjoy it more like that you know mm -hmm. so well it's great advice because you obviously love your tank and it looks awesome well i appreciate it yeah. especially coming from somebody um that sees so many tanks in, 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 in the business. No, it's gorgeous. Love it. Thank you.
Thank you again for letting us come and check it out. Oh no, anytime. Yeah. Reef Dudes is welcome in my house <laughs> at any, at any, any point. M you, much appreciated. Nope. And it's great, great to have you here. And uh, hopefully I help somebody out, you know, hopefully they can see yeah. it's a little more simplistic system than some. And um, hopefully I can encourage somebody to, to you know, bring that t tank to the next step or somebody that's just been not sure if they want to go to SPS. A lot of people mm -hmm. are nervous. Um, you know, you, 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 you can't hurt anything trying, you know. Get your mm -hmm. couple frags and see what happens. And, and uh, don't get discouraged. If they die, you know, it's see what you did wrong and start over. Yep. You know, and but I truly believe anybody could have a tank like this. I, I, I just feel like it's what you put in. If you, if you have enough passion and you want to take the time, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think it takes a certain level of um, intelligence or a certain level of money to really have a beautiful tank. It's just how much commitment and how much uh, passion you want to put into it, you know. Passion, dedication. That's right. Oh, awesome. Thanks again so much. Anytime.